What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Joshua the Grinder here, aka Grind Alpha, aka Joshua Bailey. Now, this is your first time here. Um, hi, my name is Joshua Bailey. Um, consider and subscribing to my channel. Also, giving this reaction video, if I say reaction video, a huge thumbs up. Follow me on social media. The links will be in the description box below. So, you go and check it out for yourself. Um, also, I also post last week's video if you have not seen that already in the description box below. Um, also, um, by the time you're watching this, a video should be out now, so go ahead and go show that video some love. Also, like the video and also comment on that video as well. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get into today's reaction. Alright guys, so today's video is called Suicide Survivor. Kevin Hines share his, his story. Um, this is by Goldcast. Another video by Goldcast. So shout out to Goldcast um, for making motivational um, speaking videos about people's testimony. So let's get into it because this video is 10 minutes long. So, yeah. Kevin Hines jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and survive. Experts say suicide is a growing concern during the pandemic. There's no better person to talk to than Kevin because he tried it. We'll tell you exactly what he did. He joins us in a moment with his important story. What were you thinking right before you jumped? I sat on that bus in the back row, middle seat. I'm crying my eyes out like a baby. There was a guy to my left, said to the fellow next to him, what the hell's wrong with that kid with a smile on his face? As soon as you let go of the railing, instant regret. What should people do? The vast majority of survivors say the same thing. What have I just done? I don't want to die. God, please save me. Jumping off a bridge that high? 70 feet. What happened when you hit the water? What intervened? It was the single worst action I had ever taken. More teens die by suicide than heart disease, AIDS, pneumonia, the flu, cancer, and lung disease combined. And that is a travesty. I thought I had to die. And I was wrong. To anybody out there watching this right now, what do you want them to know? I got on the next bus. I sat in the very last seat in the middle row. We began to drive out to the Golden Gate Bridge. And that's when it hit me. I realized I didn't want to die at all. I said, well, what are you doing, Kevin? Crying my eyes out, hoping for one individual on this bus crowded with people to look at me and say, hey, kid, are you OK? Hey, kid, there's something wrong. Can I help you? I, I was walking up to the bus driver, hoping that he would see my pain. not make those sounds and he looked at me come on kid get off the bus I gotta go there was a guy to my left said to the fellow next to him while pointing at me with his thumb what the hell's wrong with that kid with a smile on his face I thought that's it nobody cares nobody cares a wave of emotion overcame me as I stepped down off of this bus my feet heavy my heart palpitating Waterfalls flowing out of my eyes. I walked forward. As I stood atop the Golden Gate Bridge walkway, staring and leaning over the four foot nothing rail, peering down to the looming waters below, I walked. And I threw myself over the rail. The millisecond that my hands left that rail, instant regret for my actions. I fell 220 feet, 25 stories at 75 miles an hour in four seconds. I prayed on the way. What have I just done? I don't want to die. God, please save me. My father, on the morning of, he pleaded with me to be with him that day. He pleaded with me to just hang out. In the morning, I entered my dad's room, and he looked at me, and he goes, Kevin, what's wrong? And I desperately wanted to tell him the truth. 
And eventually I convinced my dad that morning that I was fine, knowing full well that I was going to the Golden Gate and I was going to die. He turned to me and he said one of his favorite things. Kevin, I love you. Be careful. When you hit a vacuum, it sucks you under 70 feet. My legs were completely immobile. I had shattered my lower vertebrae into shards like glass. I swam 70 feet with one breath and without the use of my legs. It was the fastest I ever swam because I knew I wanted to live. I break the surface, I bump up and down. Cannot stay afloat, I'm going to drown. Praying the entire way, God please save me, I don't want to die, I made a mistake. I broke the surface, God please save me, I don't want to die, I made a mistake. Bobbed up and down in the water, God please save me, I don't want to die, I made a mistake. I can't die here, if I die here, no one will ever know I didn't want to. No one will ever know I knew I made a mistake. And that is when something began to circle beneath me. It was large and very slimy and very alive. And I just was gonna die by a shark bite. I'm lying on the top of being kept buoyant by this thing. It was, it was bumping me up. I was no longer swimming. I'm lying on my back, being kept afloat by this thing, thinking, when is it gonna bite me? There was no shark, but there was a sea lion. And the people above looking down believed it to be keeping me afloat into the Coast Guard. From the hospital. And he calls his secretary, Rachel, and, and, and says, uh, Rachel, uh, my son has just jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. I need you to ride in the passenger seat of the car because if you don't, I will drive off of a cliff. He wouldn't be able to see straight to get to the hospital. And he walks in to my room. And I'm laying there all, you know, kind of broken and bent. IVs in both arms. I had two falls flow from it. I looked up at my dad. I said, Dad, I'm sorry. And he said, no, Kevin. I'm sorry. And he comes over and he puts his hand on my forehead and he says, Kevin, you are going to be okay, I promise. And I never held words. Hold him. Okay, Dad says I'm gonna be okay. I got this. The road to recovery was pretty long. I, I still have all the symptoms I ever had. I just know how to cope with it and I know how to beat it. I built a support network over these years so that I wouldn't be fighting this alone. My and we, we stood at the very light rail that I attempted. I knew exactly which light rail it is. On the drive there, he pulls over right in front of the police officer's union building and he goes, Kevin, Kevin, pick a flower. I'm like, Dad, I'm not picking a flower from the police officer's union building until you get arrested. He goes, pick a flower, Kevin. Jump out, grab a purple tulip with yellow inside. We go to the bridge. We get to the parking lot. I don't want to get out of the car. I don't want to get out of the car. Dad, I can't do this. I can't do this. Kevin, we need this. You have to do this. We need closure. Happened the day before. We hold the flower over the rail. My father grabs my left hand with his right. We say in our father. And he says, drop the flower. And I dropped the flower and it wafted down and hit the water and made the tiniest ripple effects. And two feet to the right, popped up a sea lion. And it was arguably the most beautiful moment I've ever had with my dad besides him being the best man at my wedding. Now I know that no matter what I'm faced with, I will defeat it. I have chronic thoughts of suicide. They plague me. They'll never, ever take me. There's no way. If I was able to exit this body and just, just be someone there for, for me, my 19-year-old my self on that bridge, I would have stopped. I would put my hand on my shoulder, gently nudge it this way, and said, this isn't the answer. Your life matters. Your pain matters. This is the end. This is 
just the beginning. Anybody out there watching this right now, considering it, what do you want them to know? Stop. Breathe. Just take a moment. Sound. Stop. Breathe. Stop. Breathe. If you give the world time to have things change, you might get to have that beautiful future that you never even desired or imagined. I travel around the world trying to help people who don't have it all, who don't have that support network, I mean, find reasons to support themselves. And if one of you is suffering and you're quiet about it, today, tomorrow, the next, ask for help. Practice never again silencing your pain. Tell the truth about it to someone. You're not alone, and suicide is never the solution to your problems. It is the problem. And you can defeat this pain one day at a time. All right, guys, so the video just ended. Um, usually, I have my remarks towards the end, but for now, I don't really have a mark on the end because you guys pretty much see the video um well i didn't have my work talk to someone talk to anybody about what you're going through at that moment at that particular moment before you end up going and killing yourself um talk to somebody uh friends help okay um talk to your family talk to your friends talk to god um talk to somebody about what you're going through Instead of escalating and figure it out on your own, believe really like legit, go out there and talk to someone um, about your pain. Um, you see with the video, um, Kevin Hines, he was trying to talk to somebody about what he's going through at that moment, but he couldn't get the words out. Or if he did get the words out, he would be judged. And people keep rushing him to like, well, people was mocking him, well, God was mocking him. Um, the guy, the driver was like, oh, hurry up. Um, time for you, it's time for me to go because I got other people to pick up. And so nobody, he never told nobody that he's going through a lot. Like all that stress, all that depression was on him. So he never got a chance to share his story with somebody else. Okay, okay. So yeah, talk to somebody about what you're going through because even though know, it can be healing. See, you know, this is what I want to talk about. A lot of people nowadays, a lot of people nowadays, young and old, don't want to have that conversation with that person that is healing. Okay? Talking to somebody is healing. If you guys don't believe me, well, you, trust me when I say talking, having a conversation with that person, laying that, your emotions out is healing for you as well, okay? Um, talk to somebody, that's another fortification of healing. It doesn't always have to be physical healing, it can also be mental healing that a person is um, withdrawing from that relationship, withdrawing from school, um, your job or something. Um, mostly school um, for teens out there that's going to school right now during this COVID pandemic online. Um, or if COVID is over for you are and you guys are back in school, but there's still like certain places that will not be open. But anyway, that's just another point. Talk to somebody about uh, what you're going through, your friends, your family. Um, stop and take a breath. Like take deep breaths um, before attempting to really kill yourself. Because suicide is a at it all risk, like high point so talk to because i know there's a lot of teens out there there's a lot of young adults there's a lot of old mostly not older but you see a lot of teens out there that's kind of thing about suicide and uh it's very sad very heartbreaking very um not knowing that they have that voice uh, to speak to, or uh, like have somebody, you should have to be somebody to check up on them. Are you okay? Instead of 
hurting that person instead of bashing them, instead of like shunning them, uh, really talk to that person. Because you never know, you can make their day just by uh, saying, hi, how are you? Um, what? It doesn't always have to be a smile. You don't always have to smile. A good, hi, how are you? And going about your day is, is quick, knowing that that person went through, was going through. It could even be right now, they're going through something right now outside. And just by you saying, walking up to them and saying, hi, how are you? Just made a day. Now that thought of them make, come, I mean, going to make that wrongful decision of killing yourself, you actually turn in that split of a second and hey, okay, my life is worth living. This person just say, uh, worrying about how I'm doing and now about themselves. So yeah, great video as always from Goldcast. Shout out to Goldcast for making great videos. Um, go ahead and check this video out. I will post a link in the description box below to see the full video. Uh, yeah. Uh, so without further ado, um, any other requests from any videos? It don't have to be Goldcast. It could be from other motivational videos from other um, YouTube channels as well post that in the comments or DM me on Instagram at Grand Alpha uh, any inspirational videos because this always is a very good video and mind you I also post another gold cat video about an NFL player if you have not seen that already I will post that video as well in my description box below and as always keep grinding keep pushing keep moving forward why because the grind can't stop won't stop and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe out there and wear those masks.